Yo, what is going on, sexy? Beast of Bald, Bigfoot here, and today we are going to be taking a look at every single pistol in Call of Duty Zombies history. That's World War through Black Ops 3. Now you might be asking yourself, but Senor Bald Man, why no be a four? Well, the reason for that, let me explain it. It's two parts, really. Number one, uh, because the game's still being made, so they might introduce a new pistol next week, and uh, that would make this video obsolete, and that's not fun. Number two, because of how zombies' health and rounds work doesn't really match up with the previous games and fuck it I'll give you a bonus one number three because I just really don't want to play Black Ops 4 that's pretty much it and also we will not be taking a look at other exo zombie infinite warfare zombie games just, just because I don't fucking want to and I really just kind of want to keep this track only and uh, also we will not be taking a look at any wonder weapons so no ray gun and or winter's howl or anything like that now before we do get onto this video one quick thing i just want to say this video is kind of being sponsored and when i say kind of i mean i'm not getting paid to say any of this but i do want to help a friend out this business i hope i'm pronouncing their name right basano cheesecake is owned and operated by one of my mods families so it's a family-owned business and they sent me a free t-shirt and a free cheesecake which was oh my god i ate it during a live stream and it was probably one of the greatest cheesecakes i've ever fucking had it was really really good i got the strawberry one totally recommend now, if you go to the link in the description and you use code RABBIT, you will get 10% off. So if you really want some good cheesecake, check it out. I, I, I can't recommend it enough. It's really, really good. They will ship directly to your house as long as you are anywhere in the United States. So sorry, Canada and uh, Australia, aka The Ruse. You will not be able to get any as of now. So if you want some good cheesecake or you want a good gift, like a good Mother's Day, birthday, or Christmas gift, like I know when I'm getting my mom for her birthday, um, she's getting some cheesecake because she loves it and... Why not? And also, you don't have to really worry about it being shipped. Like, I left mine outside in the hot, like, 90 degree weather almost all day. And because I ship it so well, it was pretty cold when I got it. So you don't have to worry about shipping, like, messing it up or anything. Unless, like, UPS decides to pull, like, a gym carry and kick it down the sidewalk. Then that might be a problem. But as long as UPS isn't doing anything like that, it'll arrive safe and sound and pretty cold. So check them out. Link is in the description. Use code RABBIT for 10% off. That's R-A-B-B-1-T. Thank you to them for sending me that free cheesecake. It was amazing. So now that we have that all said and done, let's get on to some pistols, boys and girls. We're not sexist. The first one we're going to be taking a look at is going to be the World at War M1911, or when upgraded to the C3000 Biatches. I remember back in World at War, I gotta tell this story every time we play. I remember back in World at War, when Doris was a thing, it just came out, everyone's playing it. When people figured out that if you upgrade the M1911, you get this explosive boom boom cannon. I think for like a solid week, every game I got into, at least one dude would say, everybody, did you know if you upgrade your M1911, you get like a ray gun? We should all do it and camp in the corner. 10 times out of 10, we ended up dying on that catwalk, but we believed in a greater cause. We believed we could go to a high round, so we did it almost every single time. Now, if you look at this weapon in today's standards, it's really not good. It's extremely slow, uh, not that powerful, very fucking dangerous, like really dangerous. So it doesn't really hold up to today's standards, but in OG World of War standards, it was like next level. But unfortunately, times have not treated it well. Now, if we take a look at the next pistol in World at War, it's going to be the 357 Magnum. I loved using this thing back in World at War. I just feel like I never got it out of the box enough. For a World at War weapon, it was pretty powerful. Now, unfortunately, on high rounds, it's not really going to do much. Like, you'll be lucky to get a couple kills. But I would say, like, in the early 20s, if you need a strong, powerful weapon and the box is just being a massive cunt, this is a solid replacement for a Wonder Weapon, especially if you're playing solo and said Wonder Weapon you want is the Wonder Waff. This is probably better than the Wonder Waff. But eventually, as you get to higher and higher rounds, you will have to trade it out because it's just not going to do anything. And uh, yeah, that's all for World of War. And Zombies World at War did not have that much of a uh, diverse lineup for pistols. But Black Ops 1 did, so if we head into Black Ops 1, we'll take a look at this one's M1911, or when upgraded to Mustang and fucking Sally, one of the greatest guns in all of Call of Duty Zombies history. I loved Mustang and Sally. I remember when I figured out you could upgrade one pistol and get two in return, I almost shat my pants. That's like an investment right there. And especially once Ascension came around, that's when Mustang and Sally really started to explode because you could get flopper and not die with these things. So after Ascension happened, almost everybody was upgrading their Mustang and Sally because on high rounds, it's the only fucking thing, well, out of normal weapons, it's like the only normal weapon besides the PM63 that's actually going to get a kill. I would say like on round 50, Mustang and Sally can probably get you like 48 kills on a good day. 
that's really good compared to like every other gun's one or two. And speaking of one and two, let's talk about the CZ-75 and the dual wield CZ-75. Now the CZ-75 is just garbage, I don't see why anyone w would ever grab this. The dual wield one is a little bit better, I mean I guess, because you get two guns instead of one. But I feel like it really kind of is lacking in ammo, because if you look at how much the regular CZ-75 has, then you look at how much the dual wield one has, you should be like, hey, you, you need to add more to that one because it doesn't even carry double what the original CZ-75 has. I don't really know where I'm going with this, I'm not gonna lie, but the CZ-75 and the dual wield CZ-75 are just kind of disappointing in my opinion. Not really worth it, I would much rather have majority of the other weapons in Black Ops 1. Now if we get into the last pistol in Black Ops 1, that is going to be the Python, a personal favorite of mine. You'll catch me a lot of times in live streams running around with the Python if I'm trying to get something done. Like if I just can't get the ray gun or anything, the Python's a pretty solid option. It's a really, really powerful early round gun. It's not a point weapon by any fucking means. It's going to be able to take out zombies very, very quick wherever they're at in front of you. It is going to be able to splatter their brains all over the rocks behind them. But unfortunately, on high rounds, like every other Black Ops 1 weapon, it's going to drop off drastically. On round 50, you'll be lucky to get a couple kills. It's just not even worth it. Like, if you take a look at this thing on round 20 compared to round 50, it's just a, a really big disappointment, and you wonder at that point, why was this even made? Now, if we head into Black Ops 2, let's start with this one's M1911. Uh, very, very similar to Black Ops 1, except for the fact that you don't have PhD Flopper, so much more dangerous, and this is really when Mustang and Sally started to drop off. Mustang and Sally's height was during Black Ops 1 when it was invented, and really, really dropped off in Black Ops 2, and was basically non-existent in Black Ops 3, well, when it was actually put in the game, just because it is no good. And no good without Flopper. Once you get rid of Flopper, Mustang and Sally is just way too big of a danger to actually use. But the other starting room pistol in Black Ops 1 is going to be the Mauser, and this thing is Wonder Weapon status. On round 50, it is amazing. It's going to be able to take out a large number of zombies very, very quick. My only complaint with the Boom Hilda is ammo. You're gonna go through very, very fast. Now, if you're lucky, you can find a dig pile, dig up a regular Mauser, and just pack a punch it again, and then bam, you have full ammo. But majority of the time, I, I don't have that kind of luck, so I don't get that privilege. I don't get that white male privilege there, and I just find myself out of ammo with this thing very, very often, so I don't really use it for round clearing. I mainly use it for, like, bosses, or running around the map, or finishing off the last couple zombies of a round. I usually have it as my secondary, or if I have, like, three guns, my backup's backup that makes any sense. My Raygun Mark II is back up. Ah, that sounds a lot better. So the Mauser, an exceptional weapon on high rounds, definitely recommend. If you're trying to get the stabs built and you need something to kind of carry you until you can get it, Mauser is a fantastic choice. Now the next weapon was in Black Ops 1 and also got brought back to Black Ops 2 and that is going to be the Python. And even with Double Tap 2.0, it's alright on high rounds, but it's not amazing. It's going to get you a couple kills, but that's about it. Even in Black Ops 2, though, I still do find myself on early rounds using the Python, because like I said with Black Ops 1, it's very, very powerful, and if I just can't seem to get a gun to keep me alive, the Python is a fantastic choice. For a pistol, it's going to carry a pretty decent amount of ammo. On early rounds, it's going to be able to kill anything in one shot, and I really don't know what's there not to like about it except for its point whoring ability, which it does not have. Now, the Python is also very, very similar to the next weapon, and that's going to be the Remington New Model Army. I do think the Remington New Model Army is a little bit more powerful. I've used both of these weapons a lot, and all the stats say they're the same, but I just don't believe it. I think there's some kind of bonus multiplier difference, because I seem to take out a lot more zombies with the Remington New Model Army than I do with the Python. I don't really know. Everything that I've heard says the Remington New Model Army is just a Python reskin, but I don't fucking know. But the Remington New Model Army is a gun that is very, very fun to use, very, very powerful, very quick, insanely fast. And honestly, I contemplated getting one in real life, but then I talked myself out of it. I kind of would rather have a couple other guns first than a Remington New Model Army. But it's still a great weapon. Definitely a solid secondary wonder weapon in Buried. Would not mind seeing this thing return in Zombies because it's just really, really fun and very, very powerful. Definitely a fantastic weapon on high rounds. I mean, I've seen better. But I've also seen a lot, lot worse, so the Remington New Model Army gets a thumbs up in my book. Alright, so the next couple weapons we're gonna skip through because they all just fucking suck. Uh, the Cap 40, huge disappointment, don't know why the fuck it's even in the game. Even on early rounds, if I get it out of the box, I would much rather have 
literally any other weapon besides the war machine. The Cat 40 is just atrocious. It's not even that good of a point whore weapon. It's not even that good of a killing weapon on early rounds. So you can probably, you know, take a guess on what it's going to do on round 50 jack shit. Same with the B23R, except for the B23R in early rounds, pretty good, especially on transit. You can get it right there on the bus. It's a pretty fantastic weapon up until like round 10. But after that, if you're still using it, you're, you're kind of just playing the game wrong. And uh, on round 50, It'll get you a couple kills. It honestly reminds me of Black Ops 1 weapons with just how bad this thing actually is. But unlike the Cap 40, at least this thing's a wall weapon. You can constantly go back and get more ammo. But but those two things are just, they're, they're just no, no, no bueno. Now the next one we're going to be talking about is the 5.7 and the dual wield 5.7. The 5.7 kind of falls with the latter two, but the dual wield 5.7 really, really surprised me. I forgot how good these things actually were. On round 50, I was getting kills pretty quick. Like, I was genuinely surprised with what this thing could do. It actually amazed me. Now, think about that. I've used every weapon on round 50, but the dual wield 5.7s legitimately made me go, hey, that's pretty good. So if you find yourself playing on Black Ops 2, give these things a try. Upgrade these things and kind of take them the distance. See how long they can go. You'd be amazed with how powerful these dual wield 5.7s actually are. Now, the single one... It's still pretty powerful. It's just, you know, you gotta, you gotta go with the dual ones, man. You can't just stick with the single ones. You gotta go with the dual. Now, the last pistol that everyone keeps thinking is a fucking shotgun and that infuriates me is going to be the Executioner. It is not a shotgun, people. Now, the Executioner, back before the Ray Gun Mark II was a thing, was my go-to weapon in Nuketown and carried me to round 50 on Nuketown before the Mark II was even invented. And this Executioner is more than powerful enough to carry you through many, many waves of zombies. Totally recommend. I don't even think I have to recommend it. I think everybody knows just how good this thing actually is. On high rounds, it's going to get you some kills. It's not anything like the Boom Hilda, but it is still an amazing pistol and probably like in the top 10, top 5 best pistols of all time. Alright, next up, we're going to head into Black Ops 3, and let's talk about a disappointment, and I don't mean my channel, the 1911. When they brought this thing back, it, it looked like shit, it sounded like shit, it didn't do anything, it was just, it was just bad. It was just really, really bad. Like, if you guys go back and watch my comparison that I did between the Black Ops 3 and the Black Ops 1 version... The Black Ops 1 gun still looks better to this day. I don't know why they didn't make this gun good. That is a Jason Blundell question right there, but it's not good on high rounds. It's like, eh. Compared to a lot of other Black Ops 3 weapons, I, I just wouldn't even bother with the 1911, especially because you don't have flopper. You can get that dumbass gobble gun, but it's just, no. Don't, don't even worry about it. Just don't even worry about this gun. Just skip over it every single time. It's not worth it. But this next gun that they brought back from Black Ops 2, the Mauser, definitely is. It seems like in Black Ops 3, they decided to give it a damage boost because it does a lot better in Black Ops 3. Not saying that it was shit in Black Ops 2, but it is noticeably more powerful in Black Ops 3 than it was previously. This thing is legit a mini wonder weapon and is in fact better than a lot of other wonder weapons we have seen in the past. I would not be mad if they continued to reuse the Mauser in more maps because it's just insanely powerful once you get that Boom Hilda on high rounds, headshots for days, son. You're going to be able to get a lot of kills, especially since they gave that thing a damage buff. You just got to roll with this thing on Origins. Now, the next two guns we're going to be talking about is going to be the MR6 and the Bloodhound. Now, once you get these upgraded, the MR6, the 1911, the Bloodhound, they all do the same thing. They're all Mustang and Sally wannabe ripoffs that will never be as good just because you don't have flopper. And on high round, you just don't do it. Why would you do it? There's so many other better options. Not saying that they're like terrible or anything, but the risk reward is just not high enough in my opinion. I feel like you're just not gaining as much as you should with how much danger you're putting yourself in. So don't recommend these things whatsoever. There are subtle differences between each and every one, but the overall picture on high rounds, they're all going to perform roughly the same. Next up is going to be the RK5, the B23R of its game, and it's going to behave very, very similar to the B23R. It's going to make me wonder why I even still play this game when there are just such huge differences in weapons. Like, why would you even put this gun in, in the game if when you upgrade it, it's still shit compared to the Shiva? The Shiva's pretty good once you upgrade it. The RK5, not so much. And similar to not so much, the Elkar 9. Why is this in the game? Why is this so sh Like, I don't have a problem with weapons unupgraded-wise being shit, but I feel like if you upgrade a weapon, 
it should be at least on par with almost every other single weapon. I mean, you can obviously have your better guns than your worst guns, but the thing that kind of bothers me in zombies is that there are just guns that no one ever touches because they're so bad. Like, what's the point? Them just being box fodder? Then why is it a wall weapon? I, I just don't get that. That's just one of the things I don't really like about zombies as a whole. It's just like, just some guns you just never touch because both unupgraded and upgraded, they're, they're just terrible. Now the next gun is not in that category, and that is going to be the dual wield marshals. Everybody thought these were shotguns too, I, I don't fucking know. The dual wield marshals, man, the only thing I hate about it is the map they're on. Why, why do they gotta be on that dog shit map? Can you, could you imagine if these things were on more maps? These things are incredible. Now, on round 50, they're okay. Like, they're not the greatest gun in zombies. They really do have a significant drop off from like the 30s and 40s, and on round 50, They'll get you some kills, but nowhere near as many or as fast as a lot of other pistols and weapons and zombies. But on early to mid rounds, these things are amazing against boss zombies during the boss fight. The dual wield marshals are definitely powerhouse pistols and are going to pack a serious punch. It's just unfortunately, they have that really big drop off that just makes them on high rounds really not as useful as you think they would be. Now the last pistol we will be talking about isn't really a pistol, it's an energy weapon, so I don't know if that counts, but I'm counting it because it is the Rift E9, probably the greatest non-wonder weapon weapon yeah, in zombies history. Headshots for days. My only complaint is that it's slow. But I I will I will gladly take that because it carries so much ammo and it's so powerful. It's not a speed weapon. Like I said, it's a very, very slow fire rate, so it's not a speed weapon. If you're trying to vent diesel quarter mile at a time, it ain't gonna happen. But if you're trying to get numbers, if you're trying to be the Russian army during World War II, you just wanna overpower them with numbers, that's where it succeeds. It's gonna get you a lot of kills number-wise. Over time, you're gonna have a pretty high body count, if you you know what I mean, wink wink. And like I said previously, it is probably one of the greatest weapons in zombies history. Now unfortunately, I doubt we'll ever see it again, but if we do see it again, that will prove to me that Jesus Christ himself is real and I will have to start praying at least twice a day. So I really don't know where I was going with this, but yeah, the Rifty 9 is probably the greatest pistol out of every single one we have talked about today. Definitely number one. So I think that's every single pistol. I could have talked about the Walther in World of War, but I, I just didn't think I should because you can't actually use it unless you're using console commands. And I think that's pretty much it. I think that's every pistol we have seen that's a non-wonder weapon in Zombies history. If I missed one, please let me know. I don't think I did, but who, who knows? I'm bald, so I might have missed one. I don't know. And uh, thank you guys so much for sticking through the whole thing and watching it. I really do appreciate it. Shout out to my lovely Patreon supporters. Whenever I buy this new Arasaka, or I should say old new Arasaka, new old Arasaka, I'm not sure how that works. You guys will definitely get that video first, similar to how my Patreons got this video first. So if you guys would like to be a Patreon supporter, check out that link. It'll be right down there below in the description. And also while you're down there, follow me on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, and Discord. And also check out the cheesecake. It's delicious. And uh, that is it. Hopefully you guys have a fantastic day, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.